right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in, whichever channels that you are going, you'll be listening or watching us from, whether or not you're watching us live right now or later cast, meaning after this, or you're going to be tuning in to the uh, uh, podcast itself. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for today's another series of What Do You Do? Uh, as usual, I'm having this challenge whenever I stream live, right? I can't see the total numbers on my stream yet, but somehow rather the numbers on my LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube kind of differ. But anyways, anyways, uh, it's not about the numbers. It's about the message and the kind of information that we want to actually spread to the people out there. If it benefits some of you out there, feel free to just click share so that more of our friends can actually benefit from uh, this um, conversation as well. So for those of you who are tuning in right now, <laughs> Yes, thank you so much, Cheryl. Finally, I get to catch you live. <laughs> Finally. Okay. Um, whichever channel that you guys are tuning in from, uh, we really, really appreciate it. Once again, uh, I hope everyone is in the best of health, uh, wherever part of the world or part of the globe that you are in. Um, and I just want to share one thing. This particular live series is going to be interesting because, because um, it's in conjunction with International Women's Day. I, I know Women's Day has passed, right? But it's actually part of the entire Women's Month, if I may say. Lah. You know, but of course, at the same time, as per what I would quote, um, we shouldn't just celebrate within one day or within one month. It's actually every single day. But of course, it's an additional day to remind us, to acknowledge that, you know, the need for us to recognize all this effort as well. All right. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, Cheryl, very nice. You know, love your intro. It's on six. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Uh, Friday night. <laughs> yes, yes, it is, it is, right? I was just having a conversation with me ping early on uh, the guest or the friend of, a friend of mine that will be on live today. Um, it's Friday night. It's going to be interesting because um, we'll be talking about a career. What is a career coach all about? What are some of the myths about career coaching? All right. Perhaps we're going to ask uh, me ping later, later on a little bit more about what she does day to day and what's her day like as a career coach. But before that, for those of you, it's your first time tuning in to What Do You Do? Maybe just for a quick introduction, once again, my name is Shukri or Shok. In short, it's Shuk. I'm a learning and development practitioner. I'm a people developer as well. And uh, for those of you wondering what this, what do you do is all about, is basically, it's not your typical live show, where, but instead we are actually bringing in professional not to talk about what is their subject matter expert, but we want them to talk about what they do day in and day out of their career. You never know, probably some of you are watching might be interested or might be inspired to be one of them out there as a career coach or whatever profession that may be. All right. So once again, it's not about me. I try to remind myself, it's not about me. I should, it's not about me because as a trainer, I tend to talk a lot. Okay. So it's not about me. All right. But for today, I will be having Mei Ping, uh, a career coach. I'll be flying her all the way. Or in fact, I'll be flying in all the way from Singapore to Penang. I'm going to bring you all over the world. So let me bring Mei Ping on the screen right now. Hello. Okay. Uh, okay. Hi. How about this? Okay. So our face are not too big. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, how are you, Meping? I'm good. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, not yes. just to you, but to everybody tuning in. <laughs> yes, to those of them who are tuning on LinkedIn as well, uh, YouTube and Facebook, wherever that you're tuning in, help us to just click share so that more people can actually... You know, Meping just handed her training earlier on, a session earlier on, and she actually made time for this. So if you all can help to just spread the words, of course, I think that would be very beneficial. <laughs> ah, Meping. Maybe yes. to cut chase, cut the chase and get straight to the point. Uh, you know, I'm not going to ask that you know, typical question, uh, how's everything in uh, Malaysia and all that, because we already had this conversation. For those of you listening on, tuning in, we had this conversation even before this live, okay? We had this conversation before this live. Uh, <laughs> but as per the title for the live itself, if I may start this entire session, if I may ask Miping, what do you actually do? If you don't mind. Okay. So, hi everyone. My name is Mei Ping. I'm a professional career coach, LinkedIn profile branding coach, and international speaker. So, if I can condense what I do in one sentence, it I help professionals like you to grow your careers online and offline. So, what does online mean? LinkedIn presence because hello world of Zoom, hello digitization automation. So, online branding on LinkedIn. Offline is at the end of the day, you still need actual real skills and real competences at the workplace, right? So you need to make sure that you build a solid foundation. And I help a lot of my clients do that, both the online and offline presence. So um, contrary to pro popular belief, right? I'm actually uh -huh. not from a HR background. I'm actually a qualified <laughs> accountant, ACCA. 
Um, uh, and I'm also a uh, world prize winner for ACCA many, many, many years ago. Um, yeah, wow. and I actually had a, a, a corporate career for more than 10 years um, in leadership positions as well. So nowadays as a career coach, I do share quite a lot of my insights, both uh, frameworks, my own strategies, as well as some of my practical experiences that I have seen in the workplace um, when I do my trainings and whether is it one-on-one -on -one sessions, group sessions, all those things. Lah. Wow, nice. Uh, for those of you, you for, for them who are listening in, right, I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure they would feel the same way, you know, when I, I was just telling Weeping earlier on, when she first, when we had the conversation earlier on, I felt very, um, you know, the, the vibe that she's giving off, right, that very, ne a, a positive energy, and, a, you know, it's really like, what time right now, it's really 8.30, you know, in Malaysia and Singapore right now, and she just ended her session, but the way she's talking is like, oh, it's just like the start of the day, you know, very fresh, very energetic. <laughs> I was like, okay, I, I need to host this, right? Okay, I need to try my best to keep up the energy as well. <laughs> so, um, wow. Let's take a look. Okay, sorry. Uh, so, there's a greeting from Istanbul, Turkey. Wow. Hello, hello. Wow, all the way from Turkey, Istanbul. Wow, very nice, very nice. Hi, thanks for joining from Turkey. Yes. I actually did a session with the ACCA Western Europe team that also ah. included participants from Turkey three weeks ago. Sweet. So, I just, yeah, it's fun. I've been to Turkey before also. So hi, I like to go back like after the whole lockdown. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> let's 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 hope uh let's hope you know with all this COVID COVID huh? where, where whichever part of the globe that you guys are in or whichever part of the globe safe. everyone is in. Yeah, please stay safe. Let's pray together and you know things get better real real soon. Nice. Um Cheryl, she's always full of energy. <laughs> hi Cheryl. Oh. Okay, nice. Okay, so um Maybe already, you in fact you already shared with us about what do you do, and I think you mm. kind of uh, in fact you actually did share uh, nicely put right um in terms of uh, you if I may put it you your role is to actually enhance people's uh, opportunity as well if I may if I may put it that way. I say you, like, I say guide them through their career journey is probably how I would put it because instead mm. of to me like focusing on one specific area like job search or you know resume and so forth I. I'm quite a holistic person in general. So I like to know like at a big picture wise, actually what are we trying to achieve? And after that, how do we actually get there? So normally when I do a lot of my trainings, um, I do share this like six step career journey with my clients um, mm. because most people come to me, they will say, hey, maybe can you help me get a job? But when I ask them, okay, so what job do you want? And all these things, they're like, oh, actually, I never really thought about it and I don't know. So. I think with that, I realized that, oh, okay, actually this whole career journey thing is not something that people think about a lot because personally mm -hmm. in my career, like in my 20s, I was really leading like really big portfolios and I was already nice. a senior director at Standard Chartered. So a lot Whoa. of people ask me over the years, like, how did you get there? And, not, and the thing is that you look so young and like you, you actually look, you are actually young. So mm -hmm. uh, how did you make it there? And it uh -huh. did take me some time to reflect on it. And I, I sort of gradually realized that, oh, actually I had, I had a bit of a strategy that at that time didn't, I didn't kind of compartmentalize it a lot. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can share the, the six, steps with, uh, six steps with you very quickly, right? So first one sure. is career interest and direction. If you don't know where you're headed to, you'll go nowhere. Number but, two. Uh, oh, okay, okay, I'm taking no notes. <laughs> I'm taking no notes. Okay, okay, okay. Career interest and direction, okay? Great, right, career direction, <laughs> interest. Then after you have sort of nailed down what you want to do, then you go and update your resume. Then you go and update your LinkedIn profile. Most people update their resumes. They don't even know what they want. It's just, mm. it's just in a mess. Then mm. after you have that resume offline, LinkedIn profile mm. online, then you go into job search strategy. Then now you know what you're actually looking for. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I had a client who applied for 800 jobs and then he didn't, he only got like a few interviews. And he asked me, maybe what happened? But when we went into like step one and two, I realized that this is a mess. So you can't right. just be applying jobs, right? I mean, like, you know, no focus. Then step four, assuming your job search strategy works, then interview skills, you'll be interviewed, uh, uh, you know, be invited for interviews. So you need to boost your interview skills. Most people um, babble a lot during interviews. They don't really know how to position themselves. So... I, try, uh, I sometimes do like uh, mock interview prep sessions. So I, mm -hmm. I will give them feedback on how to improve. So assuming everything goes well, you'll probably get the offer letter. You'll start, your, you'll start a job. So then we go into item number five, which is improving your job soft skills. So mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, confidence comes from competence, right? You can do all the branding that you want, but if you actually can't deliver your work, then it doesn't work as well. Um, yep. And then the last thing, um, as you continue to improve your, your learning, your skill set, all those things, then... At periodic junctures, you need to start thinking about your career growth, be it 
you know, and annually as part of your annual performance review, or maybe a little bit more frequent than that. So it's like having that career growth um, reflection and self assessment on an annual basis will help you be a lot more targeted on what you actually want to achieve for the year and how this job or this role can help you do that. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I, the, the reason why I went silent, the reason why I went silent was you literally just. You know how people would just, you know, people would give this kind of uh, tips at the end or along the way. And you're just like, okay, I'm just going to give you six tips right now. Take it with you. Just take it with you. <laughs> and it's very, very, you know, I was just having a conversation with my uh, some of my friends earlier on. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I think, let's be transparent because um, I'm an employee. All right. I don't run my own business. Um, which also means that whatever I say online is a very sensitive mm-hmm. thing in a way. Yeah. Especially this kind of conversation, right? If I'm going to hold this kind of conversation, people are like wondering, <laughs> huh, are you looking for a job? <laughs> um, and But no, I was just having a conversation exactly my uh, some of my friends with regards to this. And we were exactly talking about the last part, about the thinking about the career growth, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but again, I, I, will try, I will not dive in so much about that but because uh, the topic for today is really about uh, the career as a career mm-hmm. coach. Right, yeah. uh, but for those of them, for those of you who are tuning in right now or listening in right now, uh, especially on LinkedIn, I think quite a number of you are watching in from LinkedIn right now, but it's not stated here. Um, if you just missed out, don't worry. After this whole life, you just rewind back to the maybe the minute number. I don't know whichever minute is this. Uh, go and tune in. Go and tune in because Maping literally just gave us six steps when it comes to how do you, if I may say, how do you actually improve or accelerate your career as well, in a way? If I may, may put it that way, mm-hmm. yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you do you have a book on it on it or something? Maybe I should write a book, right? So <laughs> you should do an ebook for it. You should yeah, do an yeah. ebook. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. I'm pretty sure a lot of people will be you know craving for it. Okay. So um, <laughs> so for those of you, yeah. So there, there you go. The six steps with regards to um acceleration of your career or your performance and all that. Um, and but the question is, maybe I'm just curious. Hmm. You mentioned about you get into career coaching. If I may ask, which year did you get into career coaching? Uh, so it was the January 2020, so just like about a year, yeah. I see. Oh, wow. Mm. But I think to be fair, because you come with a lot of corporate experiences and we're not talking mm. about junior. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're talking about a lot of senior portfolio, which makes your mm. experience very, very valuable. Uh, mm. That's why I think your, exp- your, your value. So does it mean that, um, is that, do you find that same challenge? No, I'm just curious. Do you find that same challenge? Because let's say you just now you mentioned that you were sitting in stand chart quite a senior level, uh, senior director. Do you mention senior director? If yeah. I heard correctly, right? Yes. No, I was shocked for a while. I'm like, whoa, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, senior director in your 20s, mm. right? Um, do you face the same challenge being a career coach at a young age? I mean, do, is it, would you, do you think people have a resistance that say, oh, I'm a, as a, let's say someone after this say, I want to be a career coach, but mm. this person is probably in their 20s, ju- yeah. probably, probably not just graduated, maybe cleared at least two jobs or one job and then decide, hey, I want to be a career mm. coach. Yeah. Because just to, share with you, just to share with you something, maybe, um, probably mm. you are very much aware, in Singapore, right, there's this career centers that's being set up across the country. Yeah. So do you have different career centers? Mm. And in fact, it's an a lot of job openings which is known as career coaches all over Singapore yeah. as well. Um, but naturally, to be very frank and honest, if I were to just step into these spaces, a lot of these career coaches are of certain age. Mm. Okay? Of certain age. So do you foresee that people of the younger generation, I mean, sorry, maybe, maybe not mm-hmm. the younger generation, maybe those in their 20s, late 20s would say, hey, I want to be a career coach. Mm. Do you think something is, some, is it something doable? Something is foreseeable? For, something for, you can foresee? What are your mm. thoughts about it? Okay, so I definitely recognize your point and particularly in Singapore, there are a lot of um, coaching certifications right now and also different positions, I guess, hiring for career coaches. And suddenly mm. this um, this domain s- seems very attractive, right? Because we're just seeing yep. a lot of opportunities in the space. So, okay, I'm, I think my advice for younger people is um, if you cannot handle your own career, don't try to go and coach somebody else because you're escaping from your job, Right. And I've actually seen instances, so I will not name names. I know people who themselves can't really get a job or they couldn't stay in a job for a long time. And they're like, oh, this career coaching thing sounds cool. Huh? Maybe I can go and try this. So uh, my advice is like, please don't, please don't ruin somebody else's career just because like, you know, uh, it's a good opportunity for you, but can you really help the other person? I think it's only that individual can answer. Um, mm-hmm. 
but having said that, I do think that the years of experience may not necessarily equate to the quality of experience that you have, mm. right? So you could be in a role for like 10 years, but you're doing the same thing day in, day out. So how yep. is that adding value year on year? I mean, have you actually learned anything compared to somebody who maybe have maybe half of that experience five years, but this person has taken, take, been proactive, taken on a lot of projects, worked with different people, different countries. So I think the quality of experience really matters as well. So mm. I guess at the end of the day, if you feel like there is something that you can, um, that you're an expert in, you mm. actually have real insights. And I, when I say real insights, you know, not from google.com or youtube.com, <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm, <laughs> then mm-hmm. if you feel like somebody can really benefit from that and you are brave enough to take the plunge then and you're very really passionate in the space, then why not, right? Makes sense. But I think know, know what you're getting into and the challenges as well, I think will give you a bit of a better idea on whether you're doing it on impulse or it's just mm-hmm. something that, okay, I do see that as part of my career growth, as part of my six-step journey, this is part of career growth. Yeah. Yep. I, I like that point because uh, because we are it's it's not a career where you are dealing with numbers. Uh, in a way, like, if I put it that we are dealing with people, mm-hmm. we are dealing with people's lives. So yeah. to your point, I like the, the part you mentioned about um, if you can't actually do it, don't do it because you are going to damage people's career. Uh, and I, I can totally re- resonate with that because I think for, for myself, in fact, right, as a people developer at L&D, we are dealing a lot of humans. We are dealing a lot of people. And I think to the point which I think, sorry, I'm just going to bring this point out because it touched on the point that Mi Ping actually highlighted. Cheryl said, many get this certification to enhance their credibility. Training mm. feel is similar these days. Yeah, exactly, right? So the mm. thing is that, people are assuming that hey you know i'm just gonna get a certificate uh maybe a certificate in uh uh how to uh certified coach for example coaching <laughs> excellence you know for example and right, right. it's more rather certify me to be a coach or for example mm. it certify me to be a trainer for example but the question is this whether or not are we really in need because of the people that we want to impact mm. because if not then again to me ping's point you're gonna do more harm than good lah, which i think that's not being fair to those people out there right mm. Yeah, and I'll add a, a quick point here. So thanks Please, a lot, ahead. Cheryl, for sharing. Um, one thing is this, right? Getting a certification doesn't actually give you the real com- uh, confidence to coach somebody else. Mm. Because as I said, confidence comes from competence. So this competence, yep. you have never actually tried to, you have never learned how to deal with people <laughs> before. You have never managed somebody before. You never trained somebody at work before. Suddenly, just because you have a certification does not magically mean that you can you know, actually help guide them through their professional development, right? Versus somebody like me, like you said, I only have about a year plus in career coaching, but I have a very um, long and intense experience in the financial services and consulting industry, basically dealing with people, clients, regulators, and people from 43 countries when I was working at Standard Chartered. So in terms of understanding people's behaviors and cultures is something that I'm very familiar with. So nowadays, mm-hmm. uh, I think it does give me more opportunity to work with people from different countries because I feel like I can, I can connect very easily. So mm. even though you're watching me, watching me right now in Asia, in the US, in in the UK, and I, I think I think maybe you guys can feel connected to me. You can understand what I'm saying, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm very very sure of that uh, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree with you because I think the trend is that I think we are seeing a lot of people who are sorry again not. I think we are not trying to ha- pick, uh, what do you call that, if I may put it this way, we are trying not to um, portray a very negative perspective right here. But I think, again, to Mapping's point and what we are talking about right here, the hard truth, like I may say, the reality of things is that people are thinking all this certification like a driving license. You know, oh, I want to be a trainer. Okay, come, let's take this cert. Then after that, I can be a trainer. I want to be a coach. Take this cert, then I'll be a coach. But they forget that they actually, it's not a, it's not a hard skills, if I may put it that way. It's not about, hey, I can, once I take up this certification, I'm able to build something. It's actually a lot like what you mentioned, your competencies and your confidence that's in you. And then, of course, then it depends very much on uh, what is your, I know this is, I'm not sure that this is a good word to use. Uh, again, going back to your uh, passion, if I put it that way, what's really you are in need for, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. I, I really love that part. If you think being, uh, I'm, I'm picking some bites right here. If you are thinking that becoming a career coach just just by taking a cert and then here you are, you can become a, you know, a career coach. Um, not in mapping's word, but I just a reference would be, uh, please think twice, think, try things, think think a little <laughs> bit more because it's beyond just taking a cert. <laughs> mm. Uh, yeah. So okay, cool. Um, maybe then. 
now that you have been doing career coaching, I'm pretty sure even before you officially call yourself as a career coach, you have been helping a lot of people along the way, like in your corporate level. I mean, your corporate, I mean, your corporate life as well. I assume a lot of people may have come forward to you as well. I think uh, in corporate, right, the ability to work with different people and create win-win relationships is something very critical, right? So in terms mm. of like talking about priorities, you know, growth, direction, that's that's a conversation I have day in, day out. So right now, instead of like, for me, how I see is that instead of coaching team members, I'm now mm -hmm. coaching clients, be it one-on-one -on -one or in a group session. So even the, some of the questions I get, I feel like these things, I've been talking about this for years. It's just the mm. context is a little bit different. Um, previously, yep. I was an employee. And then now I'm a, uh, basically I'm running my own business. That's it. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Very, very, very valid point down there. Sorry. Okay, sorry. I'm back. I'm back. Okay. You can hear me? Uh, okay. Give me a second. All right. Can you hear you now? Okay, cool. Sorry. I think there was some uh, connection issue down there. I think it's on my side. Ugh. Okay, okay, okay. So sorry about this. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, I think so. <laughs> okay. Hello? Oopsie. Can you guys Oopsie. still hear us? Okay. Okay, I think we are good. I think we are back. Okay, sorry, sorry. I think we are back. We are back. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Okay, uh, no, I wanted to ask you this question because you mentioned that you have been doing it, I mean, uh, with your private uh, corporate sec corporate life and now you're doing career coaching. Um, perhaps, I think you touched a bit on it earlier on. What are some of some of the misconceptions that you have ever gotten being a career coach, if I may ask? <laughs> I think the, the, big, the biggest one is that um, as a coach, you are responsible to get me a job. So mm. I think that's really the biggest one. Um, I understand the job market is very challenging right now, but I think it's really important that you take charge of your own career journey and not uh, pass it on to somebody else. For me, mm -hmm. a coach is somebody who equips you with the right tools and mindset, perspectives, insight, whatever you call it, to increase mm -hmm. your chances of job search success or career success. So to completely shove it to somebody else and say, hey, you know, it's kind of like your job to help me get a job. I think there's something inherently wrong with that, that mm. idea, but it's still something that I see a lot. So I would say that that is, I think, the, the, biggest, the biggest misconception. Nice. Uh, which I think quite natural because of the so-called, the title itself, right? Uh, because mm. the assumption is that, oh, I, went, I go to a career center or whatever it might be, or in this case, a career coach. Naturally, people will say, that, hey, can you just tell me how do I get a job? Can you just give me the job? And the best part is, mm -hmm. and I think it goes back to the point that I think you talked about earlier on. It's about um, I am, you are not there to uh, give them every single thing. You are just there to be a guiding point for them. But eventually, they need to actually take charge of their own career, right? Yeah. See, a yeah. person that doesn't decide on the final decision, right, will never be satisfied regardless of whatever the outcome is because they are not involved in the process. Yeah. So just like, I give you a simple example. Um, maybe the other contact, uh, the other idea is around, let's say you say career. Career means different things to different people. So I think it also because the industry is really broad, right? Um, mm. The other misconception is that a career coach is the somebody who writes your resume for you. So... I'm sure there are coaches who will write resumes for you, but I am not that coach. Like I uh -huh. said, I'm into accountability. So if you don't, you, you can't even bother to write your own resume. That means to me, you've never really made an effort to understand what you're looking for. What nice are one. your career goals? You yep. are not sure what are your, I mean, how can you work and not know what are your skills and experiences? Because if you can't even write that, then mm -hmm. how can somebody else write that for you? Can somebody else interview on your behalf? Can somebody go in and do the job on your behalf? I'm not, I'm not sure if it actually works like that, but I do understand that um, the anxiety is quite high in you know, like job search and all those things. So these misconceptions have been there for a really long time. So uh, I think it, de it depends on um, even the career coaches that you work with. Different coach has their own methodology. 
and yep. uh, how they believe that they can best help their clients. But I think, you know, back to the very famous quote, right? Can pe- you can give a man a fish, but <laughs> if you teach them how to fish, I think they can survive much longer in True. the real world out there. Makes sense. Makes sense. Do, do you get it often where people... May, mm. I'm not sure this is an appropriate question to ask because you, you might have your clients that's on your socials. Do you, have you gotten people that come forward and, you know, uh, say that, hey, you know what, me think I have this amount of money, can you just help me do everything? Do you get this uh, comment? Actually, I request? have. Okay. I have people who come to me and just say, hey, um, can you please write my resume for me? Can you do this, 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 this for me? I, I Actually, I decline most of mm. the time. Um, and, I, I can, and I can tell you the answer right now because this is what I tell all of them. Sure. And I say that normally I don't, I said I normally don't write resumes because I believe that you need to be, you need to take charge of your yep. own career and hence you, you at least need to write your own resume because that yep. is the first step of the thought process on how you can actually add value. So, sure. And I always tell them, I say, if you really want me to write a resume, your resume for you, it's going to cost you a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Makes sense. Because okay. I will need to spend a lot of time to try to understand you and then to see how I can best position you. So normally they don't come back anymore to, to talk <laughs> about this point because I've made it quite clear that um yeah, I, I don't want I don't think it's right for a coach to be fully accountable. Let, let me give you an example. Mm. Let's say you want to lose weight, right? You go to a personal trainer at the gym, <laughs> but you don't you don't turn up for any of the gym and you can say, boss. Can you, you know, help me lose weight? You know, I really want to be this uh, slim and all those things, but I'm not going to turn up because, you know, it's not my problem. Now I gave you my goal. I gave you all this money. Can you just do it for me? How does, how, how, how does it work like that? I'm not sure. It doesn't make sense. doesn't make sense at all. But uh, yeah, I mean, that, that whole idea of, hey, I, but at the end of the day, they just want a the result. They just want an the outcome, but they don't want to take charge of whatever the, the whole process is. Basically, you want to skip the entire painful process. Yeah. But then it goes back to your point. Like, I mean, if you don't go through the entire painful process, then the outcome not going to mean anything to you because eh, it seems so easy for me to get it. Easy. Uh, whether it's easy or not, easy or not, then up to individual. But yeah, then eventually they might just, ah, okay, never mind. I may not treasure whatever result that may be. Also. Then you see, but they will, continue sk- they will continue changing jobs. And that is True. for sure. For sure. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense because they still have no idea what they really want to do. Yes, exactly. Very, very, very point. Um, then, uh, wow. If let's say, if I can just imagine, right? If I can just share, I'm just curious, what is your day-to-day like as a career coach? You know, assuming, uh, assuming. If you okay. ask, you ask uh, HR, right? Maybe the HR role is uh, day in, day out. Like, do this, do that, do this, mm. or interview, do recruitment, hiring, whatever. Now. But career yeah. coach, what do you do exactly? Day, day in, day out. <laughs> okay. Uh, Okay, I'll say this. Like, I, I prefer to, uh, to bucket it by the week because not every single activity happens during uh, every day. But okay. uh, there are a couple of things that I would definitely spend, uh, that I definitely spend my time on. The first one definitely is the one-on-one sessions. So clients book time with me and then we spend uh, one hour going through their, their problem challenges and all those things. So one-on-one sessions for sure. So currently, uh, a lot of my clients reach out to me on social media, but I, I'm also a career coach with the University of Hong Kong. And I also nice. have partnerships with other universities as well. So I spend quite a bit of time on one-on-one sessions. Then on Thursdays, I normally run trainings. So okay. soft skill trainings, uh, LinkedIn trainings, all those things. So that will take up at least like two hours a week already. Then mm-hmm. thirdly would be content creation. So I do share on LinkedIn um, four to five yeah. posts a week. Um, mm-hmm. So I need a little bit of time uh, of to course. record my videos, to write my posts. Uh, all these other other little things. Um, other stuff would be maybe conversations like this with you. Mm. And there's some talks that I do. Um, yeah, basically some collab partners to see, you know, um, if there are any synergies, some stuff that we can do together, maybe recording podcasts and all those things. Nice. And um, yeah, and I, I think finally is uh, replying to messages. <laughs> they are all, all in my all in my LinkedIn inbox, which is going a bit crazy since uh, last week was my <laughs> birthday. So I've been flooded with like, hundreds of messages. Ah. So I've been like, trying to clear them with like my emails. Uh, yeah, so I think like in a week, definitely those five things take up most of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and and I think the last the last thing is um I think thinking time and getting creative is really important because I I spend a lot of time on social media, so sometimes it does distract me from what I want to do and my ideas also. So I think mm-hmm. sometimes taking a step back and kind of observing, reading a little bit of things here and there, uh, I think gives me a better perspective on what I do and then how I can better help my clients also. 
I see. Which, wah, for those of them who are not familiar with this career, I think they might say that it sounds quite draining from the sound of it because it's a lot about human interaction. Uh, it's a lot about uh, conversation. Uh, and for them, for those of them who are not very familiar, they might think, oh, I, oh, I need to talk a lot. Lah. Oh, I need to have a conversation with so many people. But I think that's where you find the joy, I assume. That's where you find the joy in your, your, your profession, if I may say. Um, I think the, the, I think the joy is like, I'm a person who believes in preventive action, right? So when sometimes when my clients come to me and maybe friends and all those people come to me with problems and I just feel, Do you know what, can, what could you have done to avoid <laughs> these problems, you know? <laughs> no, because, because the big chunk of what I've done in my corporate career is risk management, right? So that's like, yeah. you know, we need to eliminate and reduce problems before they become yeah. problems. I used to run the uh, regulatory portfolio as well. So. I think wow. that's naturally how I'm wired. Mm -hmm. So um, I, would, I think it's not just the, the people aspect, but I do feel that a lot of my corporate background, the, a lot of the skill set has helped me better manage my time. So okay. I think a lot of people think I spent a lot of time on my content and all those things. And I spent a lot of time preparing. I got script for all my videos. My video has no script. It is re recorded one shot in two to three minutes. And wow. then I learned how to use iMovie and then make subtitles. <laughs> um, and my podcast, if you listen to my podcast, it's fully... It's fully raw. There's no processing. There's no script. It's just random pauses here and there. And time management was something that, um, and meetings was something I did in corporate. I spent at least four to five hours in meeting every single day. So how mm. to manage my energy and how to focus on the key points from all these meetings is just naturally something that I managed to learn over my career. So that's why I'm saying, right, if anybody thinks that moving, becoming a career coach, suddenly it will be, oh yeah, my job is just to help people. I don't need to learn any other skills <laughs> necessarily. So especially if you want to jump out of corporate without mm. any skill set. And then I think some people forget that a career coach, right, is also an entrepreneur. So you may mm. have a certification to learn, to teach you how to become a career coach, but you also need to learn how to run a business. And Makes if you've never been in a leadership position or a portfolio management position, for example, you may find it quite difficult and it will detract you away from the passion of helping people because you'll find yourself not spending time helping people, but spending time doing all your admin and management, content, creativity, and all those other things as well. And that's that's probably the thing that people don't see, right? Because uh, assuming that uh, as a career coach, people only say, oh yeah, yeah, you only talk to people, but what behind what happens behind the scene? Then, some, I think this go back to our conversation before this live, right? We were talking about, mm. um, do you actually need to churn out content if you are in your mm. whatever career or profession? But I think people need to realize that um, as much as, for in this case, yourself as a career coach, people might say, eh, career coach also need to churn out podcasts. Like, oh, career coach also need. But they got to realize, like, what to your point, to your point is that you are technically a CEO of your own brand. Lah. In other words, even if, let's say, you don't have a registered company, I might say, mm. um, you're technically a CEO of your own brand. You are the marketer of your own business. If you don't do that, then people wouldn't even Who's know that you're a career coach. Yeah. And <laughs> I think people know back, that you're the expert. How do exactly, right? You're the expert. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and going back to career, I mean, the question is, do you trust a career coach that don't even put themselves out there? Because at the end of the day, when you're finding a job, you're looking for a career pro growth or profit, I mean, career opportunity is also about putting yourself out there in a correct way, isn't it? Right, so I think like going back to your point, um, what you are doing and all that. But I think there's a lot of uh, silent work that's happening behind the scenes, which a lot of people are not aware of. Um, I think mm. uh, going to the point, um, even like how, how you know we always talk about teachers, right? The job of a teacher is not to teach only. <laughs> but what happens is that oh, after they teach for a few hours, they go back to their staff room and then they have to do all the admin work, <laughs> they prepare the next day lesson, and that probably takes the most of their time actually. Mm -hmm. Teaching is probably only like thirty percent, maybe. And then the 70% is oh, all the administrative part dealing with people and I mean, dealing with all the admin work, the mm. parents and all that. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but I, I think understanding part and parcel of what makes that profession, what makes mm -hmm. that role is, is important, right? Because sometimes like, you know, certain, um, certain job titles, you see, oh, this uh, sounds so fun. Uh. Maybe yep. other people having fun. Maybe I should go in also. But I think jumping in without realizing that ex how deep the pool is, eventually yep. you may regret the decision, which also will harm your self-esteem also. So I think it's always good to um, get different perspectives and really understand the scope, right? I mean, the, the extent that of what you are getting into. And as long as you're ready for that, you're ready for the challenge, and then you will actually give it your all. Yeah. Okay. 
yeah, I totally hear you as well. Um, we, I think for those of them who are tuning in right now or listening in right now, I think it's good for us to then bear in mind that um, if you are really considering, again, not scaring people away and not inviting people in, you know, at the end of the day, it's individual. But if you're thinking a career coach job is just to sit down there, wait in a room, people come to you, oh, I need my help to find a job. Uh, then you, that, that's basically a job searcher. Lah. They are not a career coach. <laughs> but if you are looking for a career coach, it's beyond that. It's really about people uh, like I think the quote that is rightly mentioned, they are not there to feed you. They are not there to feed you with the fish, but they are going to give you the fishing rod and teach you how to fish so that you can continue fishing out there as well. Um, before I continue the conversation, I'm going to ask you some question. I'm going to ask you some myth. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm just curious. This is, again, this is not part of the conversation. I just thought of doing this. Okay. <laughs> um, there was some myth about uh, what ca- being a career coach is really, really about. So let me read out some myth. I want to see what's your thought about it, okay? Uh, okay, one of the myth about being a career coach is this. They have to uh, have a background in psychology or sociology. Is that true? Okay. Uh, I think you need to understand people, right? Whether you need a certification for that, um, I don't necessarily agree, but I think... Uh, I think understanding the way people think, feel, and behave helps a lot, because mm-hmm. a lot of times in career coach, uh, in career coaching, right? If the client doesn't trust you and the client doesn't feel that they can talk to you, you're not gonna get anywhere, both of you. So mm-hmm. having a better understanding of how people behave and how they communicate helps a lot. Um, to me, it's like it, it helps a lot to make the process a lot smoother. Mm-hmm. So definitely, some baseline of that is required. Makes sense. I hear you. Um, okay, let's take a look at the next myth. Uh, this myth is career coaching is not needed. They only tell you what can be found on Google. <laughs> okay. Um, well, so let's, say you want to, let's say you want to learn Kung Fu. Lah. Ah. So why do you need to go to... Uh, let's say you want to learn kickboxing or whatever. Why do you need to go to a gym? Can't you just watch YouTube? There are like thousands of videos out there. So what do they have forgotten is that, right? What is missing is feedback loop. You can watch mm. as many Google, uh, you can Google as many articles and read as much as you want. You can watch as many videos as you want, but yep. it's only knowledge. Knowledge does yep. not transfer to skills or competence. Skills and competence only can be developed by practice and feedback loop given by experts who know what knows what is going on. And that's what clients get when they work with me. Otherwise, I always tell them, you don't need, right? You, if you want free stuff, you just go to YouTube. Don't even have to pay subscription. <laughs> just go to YouTube. But Actually, are there any skills and competence transferred? Only you can answer that question for yourself. Mm. And also, if you are willing to spend the amount of time to go and plow through the thousands of videos, then be my guest. Because there is an <laughs> opportunity cost. And I say opportunity cost because I'm a trained accountant. There is an opportunity cost involved. <laughs> and that is your time, your effort, and your mental energy. And that is unquantifiable. True. Very, very, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. I, I tell you, you are you are not just a career coach. You are a very good salesperson, I might say. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. I've never, I've better. never learned. I've never learned sales, but I, I find it very interesting that uh, since I became a career coach, there are actually people offering me business development roles, which I find it very. I was like, never once, because I've always been like second, third line, and up to like business management only. So, but very, but very fascinating. Would you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. But would you agree with me? You, as a as you are seeking for career, as you are actually finding to grow your career, you actually in a way you're always doing sales pitch, in a way lah. I mean, for you to grow, right? So mm. maybe, maybe that's where you're ne- the talent. Nego- negotiation and influencing is very important as you True. move up in the corporate. Communication, influencing, and negotiation very important. And I used to work with the regulators a lot. So a lot wow. of uh, in, in in my portfolio and at least the past two years before I left. Um, uh-huh. when Standard Charter was under regulatory review a lot of the documents after I sign off and then it goes out so there's uh-huh. a lot at stake there's a lot of conversation so I think these skills you just you just pick up especially when you have such opportunities at your workplace true that brings me to my third myth which is the last myth <laughs> I'm going to ask you uh, okay. this is unplanned uh, the career coach chooses your career goals for you okay <laughs> Then can, can can your then can your career can your career coach take the salary for you and go to your and do your job for you? <laughs> I'm not sure how that works, right? So <laughs> I, I like I like your answers. It's like uh okay. 
<laughs> that's a, okay, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Like that, uh, if, if you say your career coach chooses your career goals for you, right, meaning your first few months salary or every time you get your salary, a few percentage must go to your career coach. Really. Because if you're in that situation, right, then the question is that what motivates you? Because you were not part of the decision-making process. You had no say in that decision or that goal at all. So yep. even if you, you, you trust that opinion and then you, you decide, okay, you know, the career coach knows everything. I'm just going to follow. You will still mm. be dissatisfied because yep. it's, it wasn't your choice. So you, you will actually create a vicious cycle that is not good for you. Mm. Makes sense. So for those of you who are listening, um, please take charge because at the end of the day, career coach is there to guide you. You still got to do your own. You need to take charge of whatever your career is. Lah, because, I mean, there's no point. I, I, back to your point. Because I think really people got to understand that uh, the career coach is only going to be there with you probably a certain part of your journey. No, they're not going to be there with you every single part of your career unless you really need that. Lah. If you continuously need that, something is really wrong with your charting of your career also, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It, it could it could be if let's say you are focused on Maybe. leveling up your soft skills because it does mm. take quite a lot of time. But I think the goals will have to change. So the goals is to continue elevating yourself. But if you're always having this consistent goal for a number of years, then definitely there's something wrong. Something's wrong. True. Yeah. Maybe okay. Now mm. have you ever felt like Maybe you f- you feel like, hey, you know what? I don't think this is in it for me. I don't think career coaching is for me. I want to go back to the corporate life. Have you ever encountered that juncture? Maybe after dealing with certain people, certain group of people that give you that, hey, make you a sudden reflection. No? It's like, uh, maybe this is not for me. Have you ever encountered that kind of scenario uh, so far? Actually, right, the reason why I got into career coaching um, was because um, I decided to come back to Malaysia because my mom was ill. So career coaching sort of came to me because when I, uh, guess when I resigned, um, mm. I had people reaching out to me saying, because I used to be very busy. I had no time for like, you know, all these other things. So okay. I had people reaching out to say, hey, Nathan, since like you're sort of like not doing anything now, I need some advice on my career. And um, after I noticed quite a few of these instances, then I realized that, oh, maybe this is something I could do while being a caregiver as well. I so see. career coaching has, to me has something has always been something that is a bit supplementary and okay. the only time I felt at the start I did feel like quitting because I feel like hmm I need to create content and I'm an introvert so if you read a lot of my posts I'm I'm actually quite open about that so mm. to put myself out there to write to write posts and to to film videos and to run like in this kind of trainings is not really something that I would volunteer to do so there yeah. was a bit of a resistance there for sure um mm-hmm. But I felt that I was not ready to go back to corporate because um, I think family first. So I sure. thought, okay, fine. I mean, I'll just give it a try. And I measure my progress in literally like ba- very baby steps. So mm. I think that gives me a bit more motivation and encouragement to to move on. Yeah, to go on. That then will nicely brings me to my next point. Um, what would be some, some of your great takeaway or your satisfaction from your profession as a career coach, thus far, some mm. of the great takeaway or satisfaction. Definitely a few. Um, I think the 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 biggest one for me is, I, I mean, I've always believed in this, but I think I could really see something change. Is the fact that no one is completely hopeless. So if you feel mm. like everything is going against you, you're completely hopeless right now. That's not true. So one of my biggest successes is. Um, there was one of my clients when she came to me she was literally fired from her job her boss told her that like your soft skills is bad we, we don't like working with you you need to go oh, and wow. she she came to me very low esteem low self-confidence she didn't co- she couldn't communicate very well i mean basically a lot of problems soft skills soft skills mm-hmm. is one thing i think the self-esteem part was the bigger thing as well and oh, yeah. Yeah. this was a client i worked with for um this is the 12th month now this is the mm-hmm. yeah this is the 12th month now and Going from the point that she was fired, I worked with her from re- positioning herself in the resume. The, I have to teach her how to tackle her interviews because she was just so nervous. Um, yeah. And yeah. then working with her through her soft skills. And at the end of the 12th month, which was uh, last end of last year, um, mm. she actually got a very good performance rating from her new company. And she wow. even got the increment and she got bonus even though the bonus was cut as an entire pool. And nowadays, she's a lot more confident. She... She's able to express herself a little bit more. Because in the past, right, she had no opinion. I see. She said, okay, okay, okay. 
Yeah, I told her, you need to stop saying, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so, and now, now, now of it, it's all gone. Mm-hmm. And she's a completely different person. And not just me saying it. I think a lot of her friends have been telling her that also. And um, and I, I do see a lot of evidences of that. Sometimes she would text me, she would say, hey, baby, today my boss said I'm very organized. You know, this is like the last thing ever anybody would tell me because I'm a very disorganized person. So I think to me, like, it shows that if you're willing to commit, it's a yep. journey. But anybody nice. can turn around. But you need to put in the effort. Because I've had a lot of sessions with her and after every session, there's always homework. And every time she comes back in the next session, she will tell me what she has done and then the mm-hmm. problems that she faced. And then again, like I say, feedback loop, right? There's no point yep. going to one class, learning how to Kung Fu, and then after it's gone. Yeah, makes right. sense. Yeah, that, that's it's the very, um, It's very heartwarming to hear that, actually, to be honest. Um, because it's not easy for someone to even come forward and say that, hey, I need help. I mean, I mean, humans naturally are very. It's a, it's a, it's a. We are a he, egoistic breed, lah. I may say, right? Um, the fact that it, for people to say come forward and say, hey, you know what? I really need this help. I'm gonna trust you to help me with this. And the fact that you are able to be there with them and coach them, I may say, you are not, you are not there to really, um, change them, but rather you are there to actually tell them, hey, you know what? There's actually deep potential in you. It's just that you probably wasn't aware before this. And yeah. it's very heartwarming to hear what you just shared, actually, because I'm pretty sure uh, this person would really appreciate whatever they have been doing for the past 12 months, man. It's crazy. I mean, I'm pretty sure the fact that a lot of comments or, in fact, the reflections or the reviews that are coming in from the superior, I think that's really, really amazing, commendable. I think that's really, really great stuff. Yeah. Wow. I think, like you said, right, it's about trust. Trust that mm. the method works and also gaining awareness. So self-awareness is something that's so underrated, but it's so important. So to me, if you ask me, actually, what did I really help her with? To me, it's like understanding her personality and accepting her strengths and weaknesses and working against, not working against the weaknesses, but trying to bring the weaknesses to a baseline. And that's something that a lot of people don't understand. And even if they can take personality tests, they don't actually know what to do with it. And that's something I, I truly believe I'm an expert in because I've actually used it in my own own career and i've seen my own career grow so now i i kind of put a lot of my strategy and formula on wow. my clients and then i let them i, I help tweak them along the way yeah cool i i like that part when you mentioned about the self-awareness part also uh mm. i think yeah i mean just to share a bit of uh, some thoughts right here because i would just in fact me and my uh my manager right uh he just he just completed a it's a three pro it's a three session workshop and he actually started a workshop. It's a leadership program. But he started a workshop with the topic about self-awareness before anything else. Before you even talk about self-leadership, before you even talk about team leadership, chuck that one side, you know, chuck that one side. Are you yeah. aware about what you can do? Are you aware about your personality? Are you aware about um, what is your principles? What are your values? What are your competencies? Before you mm. even talk about self-leadership. Because most often they're not, or people always see that, oh yeah, this is what leadership to me, or this is what I lead. But the mm. question is, are you self-aware? Because I think only when we are very much self-aware, or rather if I may say, only if you dare to look yourself in the mirror and really criticize yourself, then I think you are ready to see what's ahead of you. Lah. So, mm. Yeah. And I did, there is this quote that I always say, right? Leadership is self-management. And I've said that in other podcast interviews as well. Leadership is self-management. If you see a team is chaotic, that means that the leader is chaotic. That there's no way around it. Yep. If you can't manage yourself, there's no way you can manage a team. You can you there's no way there's no way you can manage other stakeholders. Very, very valid. Super valid. And I think whoever whoever is gonna be listening in after this also, they will say, Oh, now I know what it means. I see that happening at my workplace. I'm pretty sure whoever that's watching this say, Oh yeah, true. Huh? I saw my boss like this, you know, that's why the people around me also like that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, we are not. We shall not point out names, uh, whichever business or whichever organizations that you are in, because that's not the task. That's not the purpose of this life or this conversation. Um, a bit of time sensitive right here. As much as I really, really enjoy this conversation, to be honest with you, um, I really like the, con- the the thoughts that you are giving. Um, I I think to be honest, like what I shared even before this live, right? You are giving a lot of uh, fresh perspective. I may say, uh, which is really, really beneficial. Um, of course, if I can t- ask more, I would love to ask more. But I think for those of them who really want more, I think it's only right that they reach out to you, uh, because it's your profession, it's your business. <laughs> if let's say you to give everything now, also right, it's like, hey, then 
you cannot lah. People pay me to do this kind of workshop, no? <laughs> so, I left with last two questions, actually. Mm. Alright. Um, so, my my last question, I'm just going to give you, give you my last question first, but you don't have to answer, okay. you, you don't answer it now. What I call it is a golden ticket advice for them who want to explore or do what you do. Okay? This one you can give it later. Okay, later on. We're not going to do that now. But the, la- the second last question I'm going to ask you is this. In just one sentence, which I think you already did at the start, but for the benefit for others, <laughs> what is your profession really all about? What is my profession really all about in one in one sentence? Hmm. I would say like, I would say helping, helping, helping professionals to go through their career journey a lot more smoothly. I, I think that's probably the easiest way I can put it. Because why get stuck and why go through pain if you can learn how to navigate that? If you can learn how to eliminate or manage that? Right? I, I, think, I think isn't that what we want in life, which is to you know, reduce and eliminate pain, pain points, whatever that pain point might, might be? True, 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 true. <laughs> wow. Okay. You have you, maybe one consideration when you're writing your book, you might want to have a few pages on quotes. <laughs> quotes. Quotes by Mei Ping. Because I'm catching a lot of quotes right here. I think just by you watching this or listening back to your podcast, you can just pick, oh, maybe one page this quote, one page this quote. A quote about career. Yeah, really. a lot of, a lot of my, my clients as well has told me that maybe you should, you should do a meme or something like or a quote or something because you just yeah. also have a lot of random ones that come up. Which is very, but it's a very easily <laughs> digestible quote. Something that people can relate to, which I think is fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that brings me to my last mm. point. My last yes. point, but don't be scared because I'm going to play a short video. Uh, like a okay. five, eight seconds video with a curtain opening and then after that, it's straight away going <laughs> to ask you what's your golden okay. ticket advice. So this is like, your, you know, your golden ticket buzzer. Lah. So once this yeah. video is done, then after that, it's your stage. And then for you to share with everyone out there, uh, what exactly will be your golden ticket advice for them who wants to explore mm. Uh, this career path. All right. So, okay. Let's get Miping to just share with us what's her golden ticket advice. All right. So let's go. Okay. <laughs> so my golden ticket advice is the same whether you are trying to get into career coaching or you're trying to grow your career. And I call it my three-step strategy for career success, whatever that career means to you. Number one, mindset. Number two, offline skills and uh, competences. So what are the skills that you actually need to dive into a new industry or to dive into a new role? So it's not like, I feel like it and hence I will, but what are the real competencies that have you developed them? Or how much more gaps do you have to be able to do that? And number three, make sure that you always focus on an online presence because if you're trying to hide in the corner, it doesn't work like that anymore. So even if you have a corporate professional, online branding, and even I think more importantly, if you're trying to get into career coaching, it's really important to get online and share with other people, what do you know, right? What are you expert on and what can people really expect when they work with you? So share some of your advice, share your experiences. And more importantly, I think don't, don't feel afraid. But, but make sure that there is a three-step process. Otherwise, if you miss out any one of them, you will find that um, the motivation will dip very quickly. And what you don't want is to make a career transition, make a career turn and regret it later. So it's again back to my six-step strategy. So make, make sure that you're focused on career growth and um, do what you can to make sure that you have enough information of what you are getting into. So all the best if this is what you decide is for you. So I look forward to sharing more with you guys <laughs> follow me follow me <laughs> nice yes yes please uh thank you so much i uh, really really i think that was very very insightful uh for those of you who are tuning in whether you're listening in or after this you're going to be listening in um you can actually just go and uh, just go on linkedin just search meping m-e-i-p-h-i-n-g i'm pretty sure i'm not surprised on linkedin should be the first one at the top i'm very certain of that i'm very very certain of that <laughs> all right uh, because it's not a you know it's not a common name I might say right it's not a common name that you're gonna find on LinkedIn so you just type out M E I P H I N G you can definitely find her on LinkedIn or I think if you just Google Mapping I'm pretty sure you can find all of her other uh content channels whether is it podcast whether is it uh the other avenues as well am I right to say that yeah yeah you can just go to mapping.com and then you can find more information okay. about me and all these tr- other trainings that I do and stuff like that so yeah exactly how you spell my name M E I P H I N G dot com. So your website is me www.meeping.com, is it? Yeah, yeah, my name. <laughs> I see, I see. 
Yeah, so you can just go and uh, check out www.mapping.com and everything is there for if you are, I think for, whether your institution, whether you're from an organization perspective or you think that, hey, I, I think I may need to do this, not for some, you know, I think organization point of view, they are worried if they're going to bring a career coach, they might scared that the people might run away from the organization. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that's not what Mapping does, not to get your staff to run away, but rather for them to be much more, probably much more invested in the organization as well so that they can better deliver value to the organization. Um, so Mapping, once again, thank you so much for having, Thanks sorry, for, for joining me. Not, for, <laughs> yeah, no, no, really, really a pleasure, a pleasure. I think I should have another conversation about um, charting your career path. I think that can be another conversation of its own. Um, so um, that's all for today's live. What do you do? Um, if you guys missed out or you just you, you, you all just tune in to this uh, series of what do you do with mapping, uh, not to worry because why? You can just read, watch it again after this or it's going to be on uh, Spotify within the next couple of weeks. I'm going to stagger it, okay? Um, then you can just listen in. I'm pretty sure you're going to get a lot, a lot, a lot. When I say a lot, I really mean it. Uh, a lot of golden nuggets of advice that will be very useful. Whether you are looking for a career or you are looking for a career growth or simply you are looking to be a career coach someday or soon. All right. So maybe once again, thank you. It was nice having you. All right. Uh, I will take you off the screen for a while. Please don't leave yet. I'm just going to catch up with you just in a bit. Let me just uh, end off this live. All right. Bye. Thank you so much, Mipping. All right. Okay. So there we go. So that's Mipping for you. Um, you can, again, once again, you can check her content. You can check out what she does and all that from her website. Just check out, uh, just type out Mipping.com. Everything is there for you. Um, whether you're tuning in right now, you're listening in through whatever avenues that you're in, uh, I'm going to thank you. I'm going to, I want to thank you once again for joining me for today's What Do You Do? If you're new to what this, what do you do? Or you just stumble upon this life, just take note. What do you do if you remember, right? You go for a networking session. Naturally, the first handshake, people will ask you, hey, so sorry, what do you do? Ah? Right? So this is exactly where the conversation comes from, right? To actually dive deep a little bit more, just beyond what do you do and understand what different career and profession out there. And also to see maybe this might be kind of career that you want to do as well. All right? So I thank you once again because why? Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll be having another live session. So I tell you, people are asking me, shoot, you are crazy. Three days straight, you're doing live. Yes. So today, today's Friday night, tomorrow, Saturday morning and Sunday morning. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be having another friend of mine. All right. Um, a, a D as an educator. I'll be having uh, Shah, all right, who is an educator, industrial readiness trainer, a lecturer, a public speaking and presentation skills coach. All right. Um. I think there's more that she does, lah. All right, just like mapping as well, right? They see beyond whatever portfolio they have. Actually, more than that. All right. Uh, tomorrow morning at ten thirty a.m. Singapore time, Malaysia time. All right, GMT plus eight. Please tune in. All right. Uh, you can share with your friends. You can share with your family members. Um, because it's gonna be another meaningful and insightful conversation as well. All right. So that's it. Once again, from myself, Shukri Azman. All right. I shall see you guys again in the next live or the next podcast. Please stay safe. Please wear your mask. And let's continue to do our best so that we can fight this COVID together as well. All right. So that's it. Please take care and I shall see you guys again. Goodbye, everyone.